Hello and welcome to the second part of the tutorial on how to use your David SLS2. In this video, we'll go through the calibration process. The calibration is necessary before doing any scans in order to get accurate and undistorted 3D data at the correct scale. We begin by starting the David Vision program that resides on your USB dongle. Go to the David3 directory and start the program. There is a 32-bit and a 64-bit version of the program, so please use the appropriate program for your Windows OS. I will start the 64-bit version. Select the Hardware Setup tab to configure your hardware. Select David SLS2 in the Setup Type submenu. The projector ID should be set to 2. The software will use the extended screen 2 to project the structured light through the projector. And enable texturing if you want to capture the color of the object on each scan. And finally, make sure that the David camera is selected in the camera submenu. Using the live view screen, we need to position the object to be scanned relative to the projector structured light. For positioning, I like to place the calibration panel in the back of the object scanned. Position the object in front of the scanner so that the projector illuminates the whole object and it also illuminates the six rings in as many of the calibration points as possible. The program's live view should be filled with about 15 to 70 calibration marks to achieve proper calibration. I like to center the cross lines on the object. Look at the live view when you're adjusting the position of your object. Here I move the object closer to make sure that the object fills the live view, while making sure I see enough of the calibration panel. With the object placed correctly, now loosen the camera slider and move the camera until the object is in the center of the screen. When finished, tighten the slider screw. Now remove the calibration panel from behind the object. Now focus the projector on the object using the lever above the projector lens. Make sure to view the object, not the live view screen when focusing your projector. The projector's line patterns on the object should be as sharp as possible. Now focus the camera while looking at your live view screen. The focus of the camera is controlled by the front ring. Using the scroll wheel on your mouse, zoom the live view in on your object to better view the lines. Adjust the focusing ring until the lines on the object are as sharp as possible. When you're finished, click on Live View button under Camera View. Things, this brings you back to the full camera view. Now it's time to set the aperture on the camera using the second ring. You need to look at the camera view image while adjusting the aperture. The red intensity curves must be sinusoidal and should not be under nor oversaturated. 
That is, the red sine wave should not be cropped by the blue lines. The aperture is the only adjustment that can be made after completed the calibration and during the scanning process. Now remove the object and place the calibration panel in the same location. Here I use a red dot on the cloth or on the table to indicate the precise location. Again, I don't need to view all of the calibration panel in the live view, but make sure you see all of the six rings in at least 15 dots. Now you are ready to calibrate. Go to the calibration menu on the left side of the screen. Make sure you enter the correct calibration scale length. In my case, it is 120 millimeter calibration scale length. Hit the calibration button. In this step, the software will first measure orientation, focal length, and distortion characteristics of the camera. The subsequent varying line patterns will measure the optical characteristics of the projector. The last solid color patterns are for measuring white balance. Calibration is successful and the scanner is now ready to scan. Another indicator of successful calibration is the checkered pattern projected on the calibration panel. This concludes the David SLS2 calibration video. The third or the next part of the video will cover the scanning process. Thank you for watching this video.